Today, let's study the words of God with the sermon titled, Preaching the Great Work. This happened in Chile, a country in South America, in 2010. Let me read it to you. While listening, please think, what would I have done if I had been in such a situation? The 33 Chilean miners' human drama ended after 69 days without any casualty. 33 people. It wasn't one person. It was a group of people. They were trapped inside the mine at a depth of 700 meters underground, which does not allow people to have hope. Nobody could tell when they would be rescued. In a confined space, they had to fight against fear. To make things worse, food and water were definitely lacking, and the mine was hot and humid, reaching 33 degrees Celsius with 90% humidity. Mario Sepulveda, the second miner to be rescued, said, We were with God and with the devil as well. They were in a life-or-death situation. Fortunately, the San Jose mine was a gold and copper mine, so there was no methane gas, unlike other mines. In this distressing situation, all the 33 miners were rescued. It was thanks to the spirit of teamwork they practiced for 17 days while trapped underground. Since August 5th, when the mine collapsed, they made a decision about food ration and strictly abided by it. They only had a small amount of food left. Every 48 hours, all they could have was a half of a biscuit, two scoops of canned tuna, and half of a glass of milk. They slept and rested in the truck seats. On August 22nd, the 17th day after the mine's collapse, they let the world know that they were alive. The rescue team sent down a small video camera, and the miners took a video of themselves so that people on the surface could see. In the video, they were sitting around a round table in a small space playing poker. In such an extreme situation, they were playing games to fight against the fear of death. The outstanding leadership at the beginning of the collapse was the starting point for this great 69-day saga. When humans are in extreme fear, they are apt to follow their instinct rather than reason. While everyone is trying to save himself, things can become chaotic and eventually all die. Until the news of their survival reached the surface after 17 days, they could survive thanks to the judgment and charisma of Louis Urzua. With wisdom and quick decision, Urzua turned to subterranean life, which could easily bring chaos and division into systematic, disciplinary, and humane life. His good judgment was demonstrated from the moment of collapse. He commanded the miners to huddle quickly so nobody got hurt. He also built a tunnel for survival and rescue and collected terrain information. It was due to his experience as a soccer coach and a topographer. What kind of goals could they set? They were supposed to wait for the rescue in the collapsed mine. Surviving until they were rescued, this was their goal and hope. In order to achieve this goal, Urzua and the miners displayed the highest level of teamwork spirit. The oldest, Mario Gomez, had 50 years of experience as a miner. He organized them into three-man body teams so they could all look after one another, praying. It was to overcome hardship through faith. Also, they thoroughly prepared themselves for the crisis by quickly assigning roles to each one. A miner who took a nursing course took care of the miners with diabetes or high blood pressure. 
A miner who liked Elvis Presley was in charge of recreation. They kept a double shift night watch to prepare for further collapse. They spent peaceful time playing on their iPods, reading the Bible, or recording their life with a high-definition camcorder to send up to the surface. The food was provided from the surface through a capsule, and they ate it regularly according to the schedule. The 33 people gave up themselves as an individual, but stayed together as one body. That's why they could survive. Following the lead of Urzua, they kept their rules and controlled themselves. They also wisely divided underground space into a work area, a sleeping area, and a bathroom area. The miners kept themselves on 12-hour shifts in case of emergency. They used the headlights of trucks which were buried together in the mine to simulate daylight. All the miners said Urzua helped them maintain their health and endure hardship. Urzua said about his fellow miners, they were all different in personality and strength, but they were all faithful to their roles. I am proud of them. Of course, they were lucky to survive for 69 days. Although it was small, there was an underground refuge where the 33 people could stay. They also had food for survival, though only the bare minimum. After 17 days, they let their survival be known through a pipe that came down from the surface, against everybody's expectation that they must have died. It became a global issue, and they received global support. As the saying goes, heaven helps those who help themselves. The safe return of these 33 miners would have been impossible if they had no will to survive. These 33 people chose us instead of me for their survival. As a result, they could survive and return home with joy. This is an excerpt from a newspaper article about 33 Chilean miners who survived the collapse and were rescued after 69 days. Imagine 700 meters underground. What comes to your mind? Even 100 meters underground feels as if it's far down. But they were 700 meters underground. The temperature was 33 degrees Celsius and the humidity was 90%. In such an environment, the mine collapsed. All the people on the surface thought they were dead. After one or two days, they almost gave up. They thought that they could not find the miners who were buried deep. But the miners' families pleaded earnestly, and the government continued trying to rescue them. Brothers and sisters, what will be your decision? The 33 people are in the dark cave. It's 700 meters below the surface. There is no light, but they're waiting to be rescued. Will you save them? Or will you abandon them without caring whether they die or live? We must rescue them. We are doing such a job now. They were trapped underground, 700 meters below the surface. They were waiting for somebody's help. Our job is drilling the hole to provide oxygen, water, and food, and making a capsule to save them. When the capsule was sent down to 700 meters underground, the miners came up in it, one by one. 
When each person appeared, the whole world cheered and clapped. I remember watching the news. It is the same spiritually. It is our preaching. You may think you are delivering a few words of God in saving souls. But what you are doing is saving people who are buried 700 meters underground one by one. Brothers and sisters, was there anyone who thought, why would they spend money on that? Why does the president set his mind on them? Why do they put their strength into the rescue work? The whole world wished for their rescue. It didn't matter whether the miners were related to them or not. The miners were in such an unfortunate situation, but they endured for a long time to survive. All the people in the world wanted to help them. What if they just spent the day without doing anything? What if they made no effort until they were rescued after 69 days? I heard that the owner of the mine didn't like the idea of rescuing the miners because it would cost him a tremendous amount to carry out the rescue mission. He also thought that they must have been all dead already. He had no will to save them. He didn't take any measure to rescue them. But the families were very anxious. They pleaded, We want to see what happened. Please search for them, even their dead bodies. As the people earnestly pleaded, the government learned about them. The president showed his will to rescue them. As a result, after 69 days, all the 33 people were rescued safely. Then, what were the miners doing down there? They united with one another. If they ate to their heart's content, they could have finished the food after a day or two. But they collected all the food. Every 48 hours, they had half a biscuit, two spoonfuls of tuna, and half a glass of milk. They restricted using things that consumed oxygen. They reacted all differently in the beginning. Some were depressed, some were despaired, and some did as they liked. But the leader persuaded them one by one so that they could be one in mind for the same goal. Once they were united, great power came from them. That power enabled them to be rescued altogether. When you look at the earth spiritually, it is buried in the mine deeper than 700 meters underground. God has sent a streak of light. To save us, God has made so much effort. God Himself put on the miner's clothes and came down to the bottom of the mine. God is making every effort to save each and every one of us and lead us to the kingdom of heaven. Angels in heaven are seeing this, but no angel thinks, that's foolish. Why are they doing such a thing? All angels are cheering for everybody's hard work in their given roles to save souls. Angels are clapping their hands. It's like the best human drama. The whole world participated in the rescue mission in Chile. 
Countries such as the United States wanted to help them, providing the high-tech equipment. As a result, after 69 days, all the 33 people came out of the dark mine, 700 meters underground, without anyone being hurt. The key was their unity. They were faithful to their given roles. The miner who was given the role of a nurse took care of people with diabetes or high blood pressure. They could not see the sunlight. Without the sun, people get easily depressed. So a miner who likes singers like Elvis Presley sang for others to comfort them. If there was anything they could do for the others, they did it. That enabled them to survive in the mine for 69 days. Unity and faithfulness to the given job enabled them to survive. We must keep in mind that mankind is in the same position as the miners buried 700 meters underground. So we have to make every effort to save them. Sometimes with humility, sometimes with love, sometimes with tolerance, sometimes with care. Everything should be mobilized. There are still many souls who have not yet come into this sheep pen. So we have to do our hardest to lead them by preaching. For this work, each one of us has a role, right? The oldest man divided the 33 people into 11 groups by threes and let them pray for one another. Sometimes he acted like a pastor, though he was not. He also told them a story about his life. In an enclosed place, people are likely to give up on their life. However, they try to make such a harsh environment warm and comfortable. The environment itself was not good, but each of them tried to create a better environment. They were patient and endured to the end. Shouldn't we, too, endure until our Father comes? The Bible says, He who stands firm to the end will be saved. We need to persevere to the end. That day will come for sure. So we must stand firm in faith with patient endurance. Then, what should we do while waiting with patience? We ought to make known the promise of salvation to those who have not yet come into this sheep pen. We should lead all the others to take hold of the rope of salvation as we do and guide them to repent and come into the arms of God. For this, the movement of preaching is now being carried out throughout the world. We must never neglect or be lazy in this work. Otherwise, the people kept in the 700-meter underground mine will die one after another. What will happen as time goes by? They cannot help but die. The temperature was 33 degrees Celsius and humidity was 90%. How hot, painful, and distressing it must have been for them. In such a harsh situation, they could endure. It was because they were considerate of each other and eager to save each other. They were all united. What they valued the most was unity and cooperation. Each of them threw away his own self. 
The strong will to save all the 33 people made them one huge self. It is the same with our Zion. Heavenly Father and Mother came to this earth to save us and say, Unite with each other. Become one. In accordance with the teachings our God always gives us, whether we are in Peru, Chile, Argentina, or Brazil, whether we are in Bolivia, Europe, or around the world, whether we are in North America or any part of the world, whether we are in Africa or anywhere, we are one. Being united, we are making every effort to save people buried in the 700-meter underground mine. In order to save them, we are all trying our best. This is the preaching we are doing. To those who regard our preaching as foolishness, we need to show the video about rescuing the miners in Chile. To those who are waiting for help in this darkness, if we do not stretch out our hand, we cannot say we are human. But if we are too far away, we may not be able to reach them. But if they are reachable, we must help them out by any means. In the spiritual respect, God likens preaching to rescuing people in danger. In the parable of ten talents, as for the useless man who did nothing with one talent he had received, it is said that even the talent he had will be taken away. The servant was called a worthless and wicked servant. God said all his acts and deeds are lazy. Everyone, please remember this parable once again and also the reason why we preach. Whether we choose to enjoy a comfortable life or to save people who are in danger, throwing away my own self. We ought to discern and choose well. Not everyone can preach the gospel. Only who can do it? Only those who are approved by God can. Let's find God's word about this. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. For the appeal we make does not spring from error or impure motives, nor are we trying to trick you. On the contrary, we speak as men approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. When you ask someone a favor, do you ask a person who is willing to do it or a person who is not? Don't you ask someone who is willing and qualified to do it? For example, is there any mom who says to her little child, make a tortilla, make a taco? No mom asks her little child to do that. No matter how busy a mom may be, she herself makes it. But if there is a taco cook or a first-class chef, the mom will ask him or her to cook. Then, whom did God entrust with the gospel? He asked us to do it because God approved us. God said, You are qualified enough to do this great work as my children. That is why God asks us to go to Samaria and to the ends of the earth and preach this gospel. This is not anything that angels in heaven can do, even though they want to do it. 
It is the greatest work entrusted only to the children of father and mother, the children of the new covenant on earth. That was why Apostle Paul only focused on preaching after realizing its value. Apostle Paul realized that the greatest one entrusted the greatest work to us, not to the angels in heaven. He thought, God chose us among all sinners. He approved us and entrusted us with the work. After realizing this, whenever he prayed, he asked God to open the way for preaching. He also taught the church members to pray as he did, saying, If you truly realize the gospel, pray that God may open a door for our message. Let's look at Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And pray for us, too, that God may open, what? Open a door for our message, so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I am in chains. Today, all Christians adore the life of Apostle Paul. Let's look at Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. God said, I am with you always, and told us to preach this gospel to all nations. In other words, the 7 billion global villagers are buried in a 700-meter underground mine. If we make efforts above ground, we can save them. We have to let down the rope of salvation. We should make efforts to dig a hole and lower food to them. If all experts gather for the work, cooperate, and become one in mind, it is possible to save them. The miners underground became one, and people above ground made efforts in one mind too. They were all united to save them. In this way, all the miners were rescued alive in 69 days without anyone sick. As for the number 69, we may count it easily, but how distressed they must have been in the darkness for that period of time. How hopeless they were in this situation. But they changed despair to hope, encouraging one another. They were considerate of one another, thinking, He must be very afraid. He must be scared. How difficult it is for him to endure, or how hopeless he may feel. Considerate of the others, some of them did not express their own pain, but gave strength to the others. Such a beautiful unity enabled the 33 miners to come out of the mine safely. We too should save all mankind in the global village. Whenever we preach to people one by one, Angels in heaven lower the rope of salvation to each person. God sees how many times we let the rope of salvation down to people. Seeing that, He will give us rewards according to what we have done. No matter where we go, South America, Europe, North America, or Africa, we should have pride in our work of preaching. If you cannot easily define, 
what preaching is in this spiritual respect. Just remember the work of rescuing the miners from the fallen mine in Chile. Then, you will be able to discern if you have to continue this work or stop it. We are approved by father and mother and appointed as preachers. Let us obey the words, preach in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Holding up God's will, let us save the world from the dark underground tunnel. I hope you become such good sons and daughters of God. I ask you to go to each country and become great gospel workers by bearing many good fruits. Then, all of our Zion members will receive much love from father and mother in heaven. Thank you very much.